Happy Thursday. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm June Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. My feet hurt. Why? From standing? My feet hurt. Which ones? No, oh, those boots are the comfy ones. No, they're not. They're just new. They're not comfy. Oh, they're new. I haven't they're not relatively seen. new. Really? Like how? You've had those for a while. At Christmas. Yeah. So like 10, 11 months ago. First of all, Christmas was not 11 months ago. We are in November. No, it must have been my birthday. You. <laughs> must have been my birthday, September. <laughs> wow, we're, we're going to come up on Christmas again? Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. This whole <laughs> yeah. year has been so weird. Yeah, it's Christmas next month. That's right. Thanksgiving's coming up. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's and why we Jen gotta, has we all have, that food. And we got to get that Advent thing going. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, uh-huh. people are asking. Yeah. At the church. Like, you know, uh-huh. that's, What's doing what? Yeah. Who's doing what? Uh, like, oh, we, know who, we know who's preaching on what, so we're good. Yeah, yeah. And then I told them I will be doing communion and benediction. And No, oh, you told me you're going to do it? Yes. Oh. I, I got, always do it because I don't I know, I know, no, but the guy be thinking like, say, he's like, hey, I haven't heard. I was like, oh, no, I, I told him. I was like, I, I got it. Good. All right. Ain't nobody paying attention. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. No one's paying attention to you? No one's no. listening to poor no Joey? No one listens to me. I'm going to go stand mm-hmm. in the corner by myself where I'm, oh, where wow, I'm appreciated wow. by myself. Yeah. And if I don't do it, I'm going to make Pat do it. So don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, or yeah. Kevin. I might make Kevin. Yeah, give Kevin more reps up there. Yeah. Make him do the communion thing. Yep. That's what I was thinking. So, yeah, my feet hurt because, you know, I'm standing a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. on Sundays, I got flat feet. You do I have, have flat any, feet. I don't know, arch. Just None. Just flat feet. None. It's disgusting. Yeah, so. Well, it's not disgusting. It's, it's pretty it's, gross. No, it's not gross. They're yeah. just they're just. No, flat. no, it's they fine. Look, it's they look, ugly. They look like if you made a foot out of Play-Doh. And uh, <laughs> just like, and just like like, like a like a cartoon. I have like cartoon feet. That's what they look like. There are times I sit here and I go, mm-hmm. "Has he used that phrase before?" Because it's so brilliant. What's that? Like, who out of thin air says my feet are like play doh? No, I don't think I've ever said that. See, before. that's why I I mm. sit and I am amazed. Oh, really? Sometimes by you. Yeah, just, just how you, quick you are. All right. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying this is a moment where I'm like. Has he used that before no. in other settings? Because it is it is quite good. I don't know if it's that good. I think you're just easily impressed. Uh, maybe. Mm-hmm. That, that, that okay. could be it. That could mm-hmm. be it. Well, Jimmy and I were um, talking about an article that came out in uh, the For the Church website. Yeah. FTC. You know me? CO. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. FTC Co. Yep. And it's called uh, Six Members Who Build Up the Church. Now, we'll link to this, and it was on yeah. November 10th article. Yeah, so it's not uh, old. This year. Written not, not, by, not old. Uh, by El Chapo. Uh, Chopo. El, yeah, that's what I said. Well, it, it's Chopo C- Mwanza. Yeah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that it, correct at all. Yeah, I, that, I think he's from Minnesota. I'm not sure. But... Um, uh, they have, there's an accent up there. <laughs> Things are different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway. If we go to the bottom of this thing. Oh, do they uh, have a photo? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's in Zambia. Okay, that makes more sense. And, okay. Okay. You, uh, he, okay, here you go. Uh, Chopo Mwanza is the pastor of Faith Baptist Church Riverside in Kitwe, Zambia. That's why I just said Zambia. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I would I'm just up. trying to make sure I give credit yeah. to the pastor. Yeah. That uh, that wrote this. Oh, and you know what? Uh, I I didn't notice this. This was originally appeared in uh, Nine Marks blog. Ah, and so it's been reproduced. For the church does that. Yeah, they they have this thing like, hey, we got some new content up, but oftentimes they just took it from somewhere else. <laughs> oh, I know. I love the new content thing. All right. Anyways, so this is an article. Six members, right? Who build up the church? Why who build do, up the church? Why do we care about this right now? Uh, I thought it was actually a great article. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the midst of COVID. Um. These trying times. These trying times uh, where I think churches are struggling, Mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, So, and and I'm pastors are struggling. And so there's a number of reasons why Uh, there's discouragement. Maybe you're not, um, uh, you got people uh, who are divided on a number of issues on how we should proceed. So you're dealing with both sides. Attendance is low. Attendance is low. Possibly giving giving is down. Yeah. Um, And you're struggling with like, how, how do you deal with, uh, glorifying God and you, you got these, 
these extremes or you got these the sense of like we need i want us to gather to worship mm-hmm. and yet at the same time what does it mean to obey the law of the land or at least just obey rulers not the law of the land because it ain't law uh but obey yeah. government authorities in a responsible way until such time as we are called to you know take up arms is that what you're up. gonna say jimmy i'm not saying I'm, so i'm just saying stand back and stand by okay <laughs> 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 how'd you like that i know, I know people, are you are you like that i do like that Did i think like that, that was very i think that was a good pull <laughs> that was a good pull and anybody who pays attention to the debates and whatnot knows exactly what you're talking about <laughs> all i know is that um there are a lot of people are i've had a few people come up to me uh members and say how you doing and i'm like i'm good oh that's so and, i'm and glad to hear that for like, real they, because and they were like well you looked like uh, there, there's one guy, Al. Al, I think he had Al lessons. Um, he's like, "How you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm doing all right." He goes, "You look better." I go, "Better than what?" I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> he's like, "Yo, you look like you were carrying the, the, the weight of the world on your shoulders." Or something. Uh, so, because you were. Yeah. Well, so all I know is is that he did compare me to Atlas, which makes sense because I am ripped. Mm. Um. <laughs> so yeah, people so are discouraged. People are discouraged, and mm. I think it's in. Uh, you know, while we've talked before about uh, pastors being discouraged and and um. Uh, how what they should be looking towards and yeah. dealing with this. But I do think it's important for us to look at the membership yep. and say, okay, what does it then mean for you to be doing your part in mm-hmm. the midst of this? Right. And see what God is doing among these people, right? Yeah. There's, 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 there's good stuff in here. So the first thing he says that, um, you know, and Chopo is saying, and forgive us for pronouncing his name wrong. Um, he says, there are six types of members that build up the church. So you can be, find some, some strength here. Number one, the member who attends. He says attending is the most basic way members build each other up. It's the most obvious way mm-hmm. to show commitment to the body. There's something encouraging about knowing a brother or sister is simply going to be present at a church service and you are going to worship God together. So obviously this is a, we, we, we consider it sort of a baseline thing, but you don't take it for granted. You yeah. know, people are giving of themselves, coming together uh, to worship, to put God first, to put the people of God first, and their joining together is mutually beneficial for, for them, for everybody else. And uh, man, your people gathering together on the regular, whether it's a big church, small church, whatever, mm-hmm. that could be a really source of strength and encouragement. I mean, like without COVID, it, it seems like that'd be a no brainer. How could you be a member if you're not attending? Right. Right. But now in the midst of COVID, though, we do have a number of members who are yep. not attending. Now, listen, this is not to tell somebody to go against their conscience. Right. If their conscience does not allow them during this time, okay. If there's health concerns for you or for your family, yep. stay home. So we're not saying that, but we are talking to that individual that sometimes uh, you like to sit in the back and not be seen and to interact. And now here's the perfect excuse to not show. Right. That's the individual I think I'm talking to. Yeah. When when we talk about this in the midst of COVID is the member who is perfectly fine to attend and has no qualms to not. Mm-hmm. And yet they, they I'm, I, I'm assuming, and this is maybe incorrectly, I'm, I'm broad brushstroke, uh, maybe just a lack of laziness and drive to go. Of course. I mean, we all get there, right? I mean, we all have had times where you don't want to do the very thing you know you're supposed to do. I yeah. think God calls you to do. You don't do that thing. And uh, yeah, if you're in a bad way, if you're sort of twisted up, then you might not, you just might like, well, mm-hmm. you know what? COVID, I don't want to go. So yeah, I totally agree with you. To pastors, look to your members who are attending, find, um, find strength there. Like see God yeah. doing something there. And to your members, uh, to our members, to any members out there, church members that are neglecting church, um, we're not talking to those who are providentially hindered, those who are afraid correct, for, you correct. know, they have conscience issues or because those have people have health issues. We're talking about people who are neglecting That's the church it. when they could be there. And so the encouragement that Jimmy's saying is you ought to go. You ought to go because it's not just about you, but it's about encouraging. It's about others. It's about mm. uh, uh, you as a body. Like it, you're not there. It's They are missing out, right? Right. Uh, and so it's... Sometimes I hear people like, well, I'm not getting much out of it or something like that. It's like, well, that's a very selfish view yeah. you have there. And one, you're definitely supposed, you're definitely going to get something out of it. You're just a little too close minded, but it's also about what others receive. Right. The benefit of your presence there among yep. them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's, it's fair to say um, in the vast majority of cases, if you're not getting anything out of corporate worship, you're not 
offering anything. That's, yeah. I think that's a pretty fair thing. So we, you know, um, this article mentions, you know, the, the presence of people. Uh, then he goes in number two, he starts talking about like the, a certain kind of words, yeah. the words that come from people. Yeah. I mean, think about Paul's words in Colossians four. Uh, I have sent him to you for this very purpose that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. And that's Colossians 4. Tychicus. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So why does he send his friend to encourage the Colossians? And we should follow Paul's model. And this is mm-hmm. uh, what he's writing here. He says, the encouraging member commends, recommends, praises, yep. thanks, comforts, urges, supports, and compliments other members. Mm, mm-hmm. It's more than just merely giving praise as, yeah. as, as he continues. Right? It's not It's not flattery. It's not flattery. This is a person that sees the good yep. and has to acknowledge it. That's right. You know, like somebody, um, uh, yeah, I, I, on my way out, one of the, one of the ladies of the church said, really appreciated the word today, you know, and it's, yep. it was um, a good word. And I was like, listen, I, for, listen to me, just talk to the preachers for a second. Go ahead. Um, a lot of preachers out there are so awkward about compliments. They can't just say, thank you. Um, they have to play it off, dismiss it, not accept it. You know, it's, you know, some of them go out of their way to be like, well, you know, it's just all the Lord, praise the Lord. And, you know, the, listen, if somebody is um, saying, hey, great word today, that really was helpful. The good response is thank you. Yeah. I'm glad it was. I'm glad it was an encouragement. Praise the Lord. That's that's good, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but don't don't throw away the compliment. Right. Those people that do this sort of a thing, these these verbal encouragers are really valuable because they can help you to see things you might not be seeing. Yeah. Remind you of things that you are forgetting. Mm hmm. I mean, I need to hear it. I mean, and I'm grateful when I do hear it. Yeah, I mean, and part of it too is even as a pastor, uh, sometimes you you are self conscious or or insecure, right? Especially after preaching, and you're tired, and you go, "Ah, oh, my feet hurt. My feet hurt. Oh, oh no I more want, crab, no more fake crab meat at home. No, no one was appreciative of my drip, and oh, my, my my drip looked good today. Oh, did it? Okay, good, good, good. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, I mean, it it you could be used by God to to speak truth to an individual Mm -hmm, totally well you know speaking of words there's there's another um person that builds up the church uh that the author mentions here and this is the member who confronts without indulging gossip Yep, i like this he says churches are full of sinful people which means church members sin against each other this poses a challenge to the unity of the church and it requires members to confront one another in love and gentleness but of course uh, what this quickly devolves into for many churches and many Christians is just a gossip session. Where, yeah. You know, homeboy uh, did me wrong. And so now I'm going to just talk about how much of a jerk he is to all of my friends. And like, you believe this guy did this to me. Now they're thinking and talking about him in a way mm-hmm, that's very negative mm-hmm. and not helpful. And gossip sp- spreads this way. He's saying that we ought to be able to confront one another with our sins and wrongdoings compassionately, kindly, generously, and, uh, you know, with, without damaging unnecessarily damaging yeah. Yeah, yeah. that person's reputation. Sometimes a person's reputation needs to be damaged because yeah. they have done heinous acts. For and sure. For sure. Held responsible. But for the most part, that's not it, right? No. For the most part, yeah, there is a sin issue in someone's life, maybe a pride issue or, or maybe they didn't realize how they were coming off or, right. or that maybe things that they weren't doing, uh, uh, well. Right. And so I think it's, it's really important to have that member that lovingly comes and confronts. Yeah. And I think that's, I, I, I encourage it. Oh, we, we, From time to time, I hate it, right? Well, you, it's ne- you never you enjoy like, you, it. Oh, yeah, because you sit there. It's like, I love hearing I'm not doing good. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking yeah. about how how not good I am doing. Yeah, neither Jimmy nor I are masochists. We're, we don't enjoy pain. And it's, it's, it pain, it's painful yeah. to be told yeah. where you're messing up. But we always welcome it, even if we don't enjoy it, because we know it is important and we've both been corrected, you know, in our roles as pastors. Mm-hmm. And we've had to say, okay, l- let me apologize. Or corrected in our role as friends. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. We have to make it right and say, like, I'm sorry, I was a jerk. You know, let, uh, it won't happen again. So it goes a long way, this um, this sort of a thing. So we've got all these different kinds of members, right, that are, yeah. that are exemplifying different aspects of of the Christian life among the body that actually winds up helping to make disciples. Yeah. And number four, uh, the member who prays. And Mm -hmm. so he writes, I've always been struck by Samuel's statement to David, 
Far be it from me that I may sin against you by not praying for you. That's First Samuel Ooh. twelve twenty three. Yeah. Listen to that. Mm-hmm. Like, just that that sense of that sense of ownership, that sense of responsibility, that sense of 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 what it means to be a true brother in the Lord means we should be praying for one another. Yeah. We, we should be lifting each other up. And how often are we neglecting that? And I'm not just talking about only the leadership. Right. I'm talking about how how are you praying for those in your Bible study or those in your community groups um, or or your neighbors? Or I'm just saying, like, we often neglect. And maybe I'm just, what's it called? Projecting. Maybe I'm just projecting here. Uh, maybe I'm the only one. But you're definitely the only one. I'm the only you're one. The only one. Uh, <laughs> there is nobody else, Jimmy. Unfortunately, I hate to break it to you. I'm the Everybody only one. Everybody else prays. Everybody else prays. Perfectly. I'm the only one in sin. Yeah. I am the only Dang, one in that's sin. How does it feel to be you right now? Uh, I'm thankful, brother, that you are like number three, uh, confronting me. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for confronting me. I'm like a unicorn. What? What? No, you're like a unicorn, really. No, 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 no. What is this? Like one of a kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, but like, really, you're the, you're the one of a kind because you're the only one in sin. So you are. The sinful unicorn. Yeah. Okay, so I watched a TV show called The Unicorn and it got stuck in my head. That's all I can say. My horn can pierce the sky. What is that? Only the real, only some real fans will understand that. What? what? Yep. That's not anything from our show. Nope. That's from The Office. Oh, okay. We'll yep. Know They'll know. I've watched The Office You'll twice know. in my life. They'll know. I watched every episode of The Office. I don't remember this. The uh, horn will pierce the sky. Yeah. You, do you mean Parks and Rec? Nope. Nope. I bet you mean. Nope. It's the Christmas episode. Christmas episode, Unicorn Barbie. My horn can pierce the sky. <gasps> yeah. Bro, don't don't even don't even try to come at me with my with my office knowledge. The unicorn. The man with a horn is sex of the royal horse. Oh, hey, is that Princess Unicorn? I thought they were all sold out. They are now. Cool. <laughs> my horn can pierce the sky. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Why do you think our fans are going to know what that is? Because uh, there's a number of fans that are also Office fans. I like that you consider our listeners fans. Hmm. Wow. Feeling mighty big, aren't you? Got your own fan club, do you? Okay. I just consider them listeners and peers. I don't really think of them as fans. <laughs> I want to thank you, Joe, for making me feel so small. <laughs> <laughs> I might have said the word first. I don't even remember. I just noticed that we were talking about the word fan. I'm like, that ain't right. No. Anyways. Dwell is an audio Bible app that Jimmy and I have used for the past year, and we love it. Fantastic. Dwell will help you get into the word, but it also helps get the word into you. With many different voices, Bible translations, and even background music, which you can turn on or off, you're going to love listening to scripture. But Dwell is so much more than a traditional Bible app, right? That's right, Joe. There's tons of features, and let's just touch on a few. One of the most requested features is a sleep timer mm. and is now available on Dwell. Love it. You can fall asleep to your favorite books and stories of the Bible without losing your spot or draining your battery. End your day with God's word in your ears and on your heart. There's also a playlist. Dwell has tons of scripture playlists, like ones based on mood. So wherever your mind and heart are at, you can be immediately comforted and encouraged by the word of God. There's also volume control. Take full control of the volume of the music and voices to customize your time with God. I like that because I like to have that, uh, that that music bed a little bit higher. I mm-hmm. want it in there. Well, to get started with the Dwell app, go to dwellapp.io slash jofo to get a 20% discount and jumpstart your spiritual discipline of taking in God's word. That's dwellapp.io slash jofo for 20% off an annual or a lifetime subscription. So, uh, hey. the member who prays, and so, so far yeah. be it for me that I may sin against you uh, by not praying for you. We all do this, right? But one of the most encouraging things that I've experienced and that I've seen happen is when somebody brings up mm-hmm. something that they've been praying for, and they're like, hey, I've been praying about this. How's it going with, yeah. you know, with your spouse, your kid, your dad? What's the job situation like? You know, you're, you're struggling with faith, and I've been praying about it. Whatever it is. It really goes a long way. Yeah. And the fact that we do have a built-in responsibility to pray for each other um, as as brothers and sisters in Christ is something that I, I, I think we tend to overlook. I don't think about it I, I as, for sure don't. Like, I have to, or I'm sinning against them. I think like, eh, if I got time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, you know, I'll throw it up while I'm uh, 
walking to the car. But now while I'm in the car, because then I listen to podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my time. So as you're walking, as you're walking to the car. <laughs> yeah. Throw up a Hail Mary. <laughs> without the Mary. <laughs> without the Mary. <laughs> It's a hail Jesus. I don't know. Yeah, what do you, what do you would call that? But basically, just like, hey, pray for this guy. Now I got to gotta listen to the I hope CDC he's doing album. good and, yeah. and bless the world. Right. So we definitely um, should be you know, keeping an eye out for those people that praise and be, pray for us because um, it is a big help. And you definitely have these people in your church. Number five, he says, um, the member who serves. Yeah. Attendance is necessary, but members should do more than just attend. They should serve. They should do the work of ministry from Ephesians 4.12. They use their gifts to serve God and other members building up the church in the process. Um, we have a, a, a high percentage, at least before COVID, right? We had a very high percentage of members who yeah. served. Yep. And that that's great. And we always have more opportunities yeah, we, yep. to serve. So service is important. But the reason it's important is not to simply get things done. It is to do the work of ministry. It's to participate in in the discipleship process. Mm -hmm. It's to love and take care of each other. Serving is serving people, whether it's really public or it's more behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's serving the Lord. And we should definitely be encouraged by, um, and, and, and I think we are strengthened. The church is built up when we recognize this. But sometimes we have to encourage people to serve. And Jimmy, when 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 the church has to, and Redeemer has a lot of people that love to serve, but mm -hmm, we still have mm -hmm, to do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you have to call on people to serve, how do you do that in a way that will like it, welcome them in without shaming them? Yeah, no, I uh, typically on a Sunday morning will uh, box them into a corner and ask, uh, now that you have... Um, uh, taken so much is there anything you'd like to give mm -hmm. uh by way of serving right it's the janet jackson philosophy of ministry what have you done for me lately and that's what you're doing right that is exactly mm -hmm. what i'm okay. doing right. no so uh typically what we'll do um is we we continually invite people and um but there are certain uh opportunities that i do you know think through to myself and i go hey yeah, yeah. i think this person would totally. do well there yeah you know i think this person would would excel and uh, I think they're a people person, or I think that, uh, um, well, like recently, you know, when we we're looking at more individuals for um, up announcements, front announcements, up front announcements, scripture readings, yeah. right? Yeah, you're like, oh, well, obviously, Dahan, Dave Dahan, obviously, Dahan would do good. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, Jennifer Mon would Dave be fantastic. Dave Dahan is so good looking that even if he couldn't read, he'd be worth just putting up there. We're just gonna put him up He's there. He's handsome. He is. He is very handsome man. I'm just saying, but he does read very well. He, does, he can he does. preach, he can he teach, does. he does all that stuff. He does. I'm just saying, since you brought him up, I didn't bring him uh, up. Since you yeah. were talking about, you know, I know he's handsome I, and everything, I was, I was just I, saying, well, like, I, I didn't even say if handsome. he wasn't super good at reading and preaching, which he is, we'd still, we could still use him. So anyways, uh, we looked at these individuals and said, uh, you know what? They would do really well there. Right. And I think it would be a benefit and a blessing to the body to have them serve in that role if they'd be willing to. And so we, you know, invite them, we encourage them. Why um, don't people, why don't people just, okay, so when a, when a, when a, somebody from the stage or when a, when a pastor says, hey, we need three or five or 15 or 20, whatever, mm -hmm. volunteers to serve in this capacity. They make the announcement and nobody comes up. Is it because nobody wants to help or is there another reason why they might not come forward? Yeah. I mean, I've got a, a number of thoughts on it. One, I do think, uh, first and foremost, people don't feel qualified mm. for it. And so, uh, that's it. It's maybe a sense of humility out of it. You know, I think best case scenario, that's it. I mm -hmm. think people don't feel qualified. They don't have the tools. They don't think they could do it. So I think secondly, then it's because we haven't done a very good job as leaders uh, to explain the onboarding process right. of, hey, here's, you know, no experience required on the job training mm -hmm. kind of a thing, right? Um, and so I think that's that's probably one of the main things is people think uh, they're not qualified. I think, too, they don't know what the ex uh, uh, the expectations are, and so they don't know what the time commitment is. Right. And I think some people, I, I think a lot, there's a number of people that may feel overwhelmed and mm -hmm. overburdened. Uh, and so in their personal life and in their, their work life. And so they feel like they can't give any more, especially not knowing what that actually entails. Yeah. Especially uh, if they've had bad experiences where churches are like really exploiting them yep. and, and overworking them. And then number three, uh, they're already giving so much in other areas of the church. Mm. 
And I would even say maybe a, a small one to add in might be that um, people think, well, other people got this, like, you know, it's, it's, mm. it's probably already taken care mm-hmm. of, it's getting mm-hmm. taken care of. Mm-hmm. And that, that's some laziness perhaps involved in that. We can come up with a bunch of sinful reasons people yeah, might yeah. not. But I think, that's, I think that's helpful, Jimmy. So we, you know, we want to be, uh, you know, thanking God for the people who serve, the members who serve, and calling our people to serve because they are blessed and strengthened in that process. And yeah, let's, uh, you know what, let's, uh, I want to hit on that just one more time. Yeah. Because I've been in churches where it's like, I feel, I, no, and I don't feel, I've seen it, where they're like lamenting, lamenting, we don't have enough volunteers. We can't do this because we don't have volunteers. Why can't people step up? And I think, I, I'll sit there and I'm thinking like, I feel horrible for the people that are showing up every week. Right. Like, you're such a saying, you've wasted your time. Like, so I think it's yeah. really important that when you are presenting a need, Please don't lament about it. Please don't be so downcast. Yeah. You know, it's this is a great opportunity. You know what? You've got a great opportunity to join in this ministry and to join in this work and to join along this other group of dedicated individuals that have lovingly been serving the body. Why don't you mm-hmm. join them on mission? Like, there's ways of presenting yeah. things. So it, it makes a big difference. You have to celebrate what God is doing. You, you know, give honor to those that are serving well and say, hey, there's more we can do. There's more. And like, why don't you join with us in that? Yeah. Instead of missing out, you losers. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> no, 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 don't that, do that. Don't okay. do that. I was just free sound. All right. And so then, uh, and number then, six. Number six. Uh, give, you know, uh, give abundantly. Uh, give uh, relentlessly. Mm-hmm. Uh, give. You just love talking in, about giving. Uh, what? You just what love is, talking about Oh, giving. number six. is the, It's not the member who gives financially? No, oh. it's the member who <gasps> Who shows patience? Yeah, there. That's oh, what he said. Oh, that's it. He says, "Who shows patience?" <laughs> uh, patience is a vitally important. Or sorry, I'm going to read this. Patience is a vitally important both for. <laughs> All right, is it me? No, it's not you. Okay, you just. Uh, they didn't when they stole the article from Nine Marks. They didn't. Uh, yeah, they didn't check the grammar. Okay. Patience is vitally important both for the individual believer and the congregation as a whole. After all, the Christian's life isn't a sprint but a marathon. Our walk with the Lord is a process and we won't noticeably grow overnight. I love this. Mm, yeah. I love this. Be patient with each other as you walk along the yeah. sanctification path, right? Be patient with each other. Be patient with the new believer. Mm-hmm. Be patient with the old believer. Be patient with the church. Be patient with the church and with the pastorate, yep. right? Like we're all trying to grow and work through this. And uh, we all have weaknesses and um, um What's the word? Uh, well, just uh, weaknesses and shortcomings to work through. I don't know why the the comings always have to be short and why that's a bad thing, <laughs> but whatever. I do take some offense to that. Do you really? Yeah, no, you take offense. Why not, why not tall comings? Tall, like, what's the, <laughs> I don't understand why that can't. That's definitely yeah, a problem. That is not a thing. That's a no one has no, no one has ever it, said, look at those tall comings. Yeah, because uh, you know why? Because you have to be this tall to ride. You know what? Short if you get too tall, you don't have you like die when like thirty five or something. Like I, what is yeah, people die. Like the, the short people live longer. When you're tall, yeah, you die early. That's a thing. Where? Where have yeah, you seen that uh, thing? JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. Link. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> so I, I agree that we, you know, we we have to show patience because yeah. if if you're impatient and I can be an impatient person, um, it, it makes you insufferable. It means like people, if you're just constantly complaining about what isn't happening, why things aren't moving mm-hmm, along, what, mm-hmm. then you become a burden to others. And yeah. like, even though I tend to do it with situations and like things that aren't that important, all I can see my whole family collectively roll their eyes when I start going, what's going on? Why is this taking so long? I don't understand what's going on. Oh yeah, no, I've rolled my eyes at like, as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, because Jimmy's never impatient. Never like you. Oh, please. Never like you. Really? Never. Okay, then we'll, we'll talk about the Vegas trip never. next time. We'll talk about the Vegas trip next time. I have no idea about Vegas. Yeah. What are you talking about? When we went to Vegas, you were- uh, I was very relaxed. You, you were, no, you got super impatient. With what? Oh, oh, Jimmy had this whole thing. Are we, you talking we, about with we, you? Are no. we talking about, because you're the guy- No, I'm saying that you- we, Okay, so- That Jim, stands on 15 when the dealer shows seven. Okay, I don't even know what that means. Exactly. Uh, That's why you're standing. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy gets really mad if uh, at me- if I don't play cards the way he thinks I should play cards. Well, this and, is exactly uh, what I'm talking about right there. That, <laughs> <laughs> and then I kick, I kick people off my table. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Jimmy did tell me, he was like, uh, listen, don't goof around because the guys that are real serious, like they're, 
expect you to play serious. And if you don't, it messes up what would have been their hand. You mess up the table. Yeah. <laughs> and you throw the table off and you throw it off. Hey, this was my game. Um, <laughs> so we, we have to be patient with each other. And, and listen, we, we, we should be patient with each other because God is actually doing something. He's growing the yeah. church. He's strengthening the church. Yeah. He's leading the church. And he's patient with us. So why can't we be patient? We should be patient with each other. Anytime I, anytime I get impatient with my kids, right, which is easy because my kids are my kids. Mm-hmm. And they have my, a lot of my faults. Uh, I was actually going to say they're pretty darn good. Oh, they're good. much better than I was. But the faults oh, yes. that they have come from me is what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm about to say no, you no, got no. some pretty great kids. No, yeah. My, no. I was in, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was in bad to, shape. Okay. I know you were. I'm just saying no, my they, kid, my, they my, are very well my, behaved. My kids are, are, are well behaved. Um, but when I get impatient with them and I'm like, you know, why haven't they figured this out yet? Why can't they do what I'm telling them to do? Uh, it really is helpful to to remember, like we all. It takes it takes time to really develop habits, to yeah, learn things, yeah. to grow, and and for something to become a part of who you are. That takes a long time, and so being patient with each other. Uh, that when you see a member being patient, boy, that encourages you to be patient, and it helps you to see and focus on what God's actually doing. This is a good article from yeah. uh, Mr. Moanza by Chopo Chop. I'm it, it, it's it's one C H O P O. Yeah, Chopo. Okay, you've spent more time in Africa than I have. Yeah, so, and I'm guessing on this part. Yeah. All right. Well, Jimmy, what, what if they want to? What if they want to correct uh, this article or yell at us about something? What do they do? <laughs> you can head. Uh, wait, is it? You can follow us online on Instagram, and Twitter at Doc and Devo, or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website DoctrineDevotion.com. They can contact us. You can send it for the email blast. Or hit up the store JoeFoStore.com and grab that pre-order gear. Get that T-shirt because we're going to close get that, that hoodie soon because we got to we get we got to get it ordered. That way we can get it get Whoa. it to you in time for Christmas. I'm gonna. Oh, I can't wait. I'm gonna. I'm wait. I want that hoodie so bad. Oh, I'm, I want the T-shirt really so pumped. bad. I'm really pumped. First pod every Monday and Thursday. Later.